Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we are going to look at Ansible playbook structure. So we will break down the Ansible playbook and we will look at how uh, you can write your playbook as a beginner. So basically how you can write your first automation script. So have you ever wished you had a magic spell um, which can help you to instantly spread a set up a server? or maybe install some application or deploy a file exactly the same way every single time. Well, in the world of IT automation, that magic spell is called an Ansible playbook. So if you ever found yourself doing the same repetitive steps on a server like installing Nginx or creating a user, copying files, this video is for you. We are going to break down the structure of an Ansible playbook step by step so you can write your very first automation script from scratch no complex jargons just clear instructions once again before i start off with the session please don't forget to hit that subscribe button so let's get started with this so first let's talk about ansible right so a quick refresher so ansible is an open source automation engine that makes provisioning configuration management application deployment and orchestration incredibly easy. Now, the best part of your Ansible is it is completely agentless. That means you don't need to install any special software on the machine that you're going to manage. All you need is SSH access from your control machine that usually um, you run your Ansible, which is your local machine or your jump box to your managed nodes. Now, Let's look at the bigger picture, which is what is an Ansible playbook. So imagine you're a chef and you have a fantastic recipe that you want to share with multiple kitchens. So Ansible playbook is, is exactly like that. It's your detailed step-by-step -step, um, instruction manual or recipe for your computers or servers. So it's a plain text file, usually ending in dot uh, yaml or dot yml so it's a yaml file now this tells ansible what to do basically uh, these are your tasks or ingredients or your steps then where to do it so these are your host or the kitchens where the recipe is made and then how to do it so these are modules or the specific tools or action to be taken on your managed nodes now, why playbooks? So they bring you many benefits. So they are repeatable, meaning you can run the exact same setup countless times. They are scalable, working on one server or thousand servers. And then they are declarative, meaning you can describe the desired state and Ansible figures out how to get there. So it provides you many benefits. Now, a crucial concept for playbooks is idempotency. Now, this means you can run the same playbook multiple times and it will only make changes if the system isn't already in the desired state. So, let's say you want to install Nginx on a server. Now, you have written an Ansible playbook for that. Now, Ansible won't try to install uh, Nginx if it has already installed it. So this makes your automation safe and efficient. So basically idempotency is uh, it will execute it only once. So no matter how many times you run the playbook, the uh, action will be taken only once. So let's say the first time when you run and Nginx was not installed, Ansible playbook will install the Nginx. The next time when you run again, it will see that Nginx is already installed and it will not take any action so it that's way it that way it is very safe and efficient all right now let's do some hands-on and start building our playbook now this is my control machine and this is where i will be having my ansible running now before you start running uh, creating your ansible playbooks we have to ensure that we have ansible installed so in this case you see i don't have ansible installed so i'm running an ec2 instance which is on ubuntu ami so let's go ahead and install our Ansible. Now, before we install the Ansible, let me quickly update the machine here. And now let's uh, get the command for installing Ansible. So here is the command. So let me copy that and let's run that. So this will install Ansible for us. So Ansible is a Python tool. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very you know, flexible tool and 
there's a lot of use cases that you can um, use Ansible for. So let's wait for Ansible installation to complete. And this is done. So now we can check for our Ansible and you see my Ansible is installed. Now let's start building our Ansible playbook. So uh, you will need to create a file. So let's call this as playbook.yaml. So the Ansible playbook, it is written in the YAML uh, serialization language. I'm not going to talk a lot about YAML over here, uh, maybe for a different session. So I'm creating this file and make sure it ends with the .yml or .yaml, which basically indicates it's a YAML file. Now, every Ansible playbook, it starts with three hyphens. Now, this is like saying, hey, Ansible, a uh, new playbook or recipe starts from here. All right. Now, the golden rule of YAML and your playbook is indentation really matters in YAML. So if not, the playbook will fail to execute with error. So um, like how in JSON we have um, semicolons, which, which plays a very important role. Likewise, in YAML, we have indentation, which is very critical. If not, if you're not uh, using the indentations properly, then your uh, script will not uh, work and it will fail. So for this, you can use spaces, usually two or four, but always be consistent. So if you're using two spaces, then make sure in the entire playbook, you're using two spaces only. Or if you're using four spaces, then make sure you're using four spaces. Now, uh, we use these spaces to show what belongs to what. So it's like using bullet points or an outline. And this defines the structure. And never use tabs for indentations always try to use spaces now most entries in yaml are simple key value pairs so you'll have a key and a value related to that okay the next step would be to define your place so every playbook can have one or more place so think of each play as a separate chapter in your recipe book or a major dish that you are preparing now we can start a new play with a dash followed by a space so here with a dash followed by a space then we give this play a clear descriptive name all right so this helps you remember what this section of your automation does so, so let's say uh, deploy nginx web server all right so it's user defined so you can give whatever you want so we are giving it a name next we define the hosts all right now this is what we use to tell ansible which computers this particular play applies to so where do you want ansible to execute this um, uh, playbook this particular script so let's say web servers okay just for the sake of example you can also use hosts is set to all so if this recipe, if this playbook applies to all the machines in your inventory, then you can simply set it to all. You can also use local host. So if you want to execute it on your control machine itself, then you can make use of your local host. So in my case, I'm going to use local host so that I can execute this playbook on my uh, local machine itself. Now, there could be times where you have to install software or change important system files. And to do that, Ansible needs special, special permissions like an administrator or a root user. So this is where become comes in. So if you said become to yes, it's like telling Ansible, hey, for all the steps in this play, put on your supervisor hat and run commands with administrator privileges. Now, if you don't need special permissions, you can simply leave out this line or you can set this to no. So you can use true and true or false, yes or no. So depending on what you're doing. So in our case, we will be installing certain packages and we will need to have that admin privileges. Now, let's talk about the actual instructions. So after become, you will be writing your tasks. All right now this is your detailed step by step to do list for your playbook so basically what exactly you want to do so we have defined our play so we want to deploy nginx web server 
uh, where do you want to deploy it and whether you want to give admin privileges or not. And then comes your step-by-step -step instructions. Now, each individual task within this list also starts with a dash. Okay, and then followed by your space, just like our main playbook. Now remember, Ansible runs these tasks in the order that you list them. So let's make our first task and let's call this as, uh, we will give it a name and let's call this as installing nginx web server. So just like the play that we have done here, each task needs a clear title so you know what it does. Then we make use of your module. Now, which tool or which module do we use? So Ansible has hundreds of modules. So depending on what you want to do, you can make use of your modules. Now, these are specialized tools for specific jobs. So for installing software on your Linux machine like Ubuntu or Debian, we can make use of your APT module, which is your package manager. Now, this module needs further instructions like for apt APT, we need, we need to give the name of the package that you want to manage, the state, whether it should be present or absent. So in our case, it would be name is, let's say, nginx, and then state would be present. So you see the indentation that I'm following here. So this becomes one task for me. Okay. So after every colon, we need to give a space and then here I have double space, here I have double space and here also I have double space. So this task literally says um, install Nginx on the web server. We are using APT tool and make sure Nginx is present. Now let's say we want to make sure Nginx is actually running. So this is where our second task comes in and we will make use of your service module for this so let's give it a name first so make sure nginx service is running and then we will make use of your service module and then the name of the service so nginx and then state would be started and then enable is true so this tells ansible use the service module target nginx make sure it is started and enabled meaning it will start automatically whenever the server boots finally let's add the third task so let's say deploy a sample page and for this we will make use of the copy module so copy and then I want to use content and then let's say h1 hello from Ansible this is our web server And then my destination would be slash var da, 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 html slash index.html and then the mode which would be 0644. So here we are using the copy module to place the text hello from Ansible directly into the index.html file. We are also setting the correct permissions on the file and we have set up a very simple web page to be deployed um, uh, on my nginx now you can do many more things so here you can see i have total three tasks so this is one task this is another task and this is the third task so this dash basically tells you uh, start of a new task all right now that we have built our playbook let's save this now to run this we will be using this command ansible hyphen playbook um, now if you're using an inventory file i'm not using an inventory file i won't talk uh, much about it but uh, 
inventory file is what we use to specify the details about the remote machines the machines that your ansible will be controlling in this case i'm not using any remote machines i'm, I'm just going to do it on my local machine itself so for that i won't be needing any inventory file but if you had an inventory file then this is how you can pass it so basically have a file with the name inventory and then within that file you'll have all the details i have other videos on my channel you can go through them where i have given you examples i have spoken about examples on the inventory file uh, so ansible hyphen playbook and then the name of your uh, playbook so this will start executing the uh, playbook for us so you can see the play so that's the name we have given and we are executing it on the local host so you will see tasks turn green if uh, successful and uh, yellow if a change was made so once it's done you can open a web browser and uh, try hitting your server ip address and you should see hello from ansible page so you can see uh, nginx is installed make sure the service is running and we have deployed a sample page so let's try hitting this so let me take the ip address and if i hit this you can see hello from ansible this is our web server so likewise you can write your uh, playbooks to do many more things right so you can do many more things with your ansible playbooks you can deploy an application so i'll share you a link where i have shown you um, an example of using ansible to deploy our application so if i can show you here yeah, so here is the example playbook for deploying a flask application python application so i'll show you the link to this so you can go through that so likewise, you can uh, also install database client and do some basic configuration among other things. So here, there should be another example that you can uh, look at where if you want to manage your users, like, you know, create a user and then add their public key and then add the user to a particular group. All those things can be done. So basically, the point is whenever you want to work with your remote machines and you want to do some configurations on your remote machines we can make use of your ansible playbooks for that now let's talk about some of the best practices for your ansible playbook so to truly excel with ansible playbooks there are some best practices that you need to keep in mind so the first thing we have is make use of roles so organize your playbooks into reusable self-contained units called roles this promotes modularity and makes complex projects manageable so this is more of an advanced concept that you have in your ansible and if you want to make your ansible more uh, reusable and reduce the complexity we make use of your roles uh, keep item potency in mind so always design tasks so they can be run multiple times without causing unintended side effects or errors leverage variables so use variables for sensitive data you know you can make use of your ansible vault for that and for configuration differences across environments so for example here if you see this is your variables example so you have the key and then you have the value then version control everything so treat your playbooks like code store them in git track the changes and use branches and then test thoroughly so use ansible hyphen playbook hyphen f1 check to simulate a run without making changes and then ansible hyphen playbook hyphen f1 diff to see exactly what changes would be made and then start simple don't try to automate everything at once build your playbooks iteratively so ansible playbooks are an incredibly powerful tool for any devops professional they transform tedious error prone manual tasks into automated reliable and scalable processes by mastering playbooks you can gain consistency efficiency and the ability to manage your infrastructure with unprecedented control i encourage you to try these examples yourself if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel for more devops content and let me know in the comment section below for any other topics that you would like me to cover. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next session.